give him a mask and he will tell you the truth. Nazi free. I have always been a fan of Rage Against the Machine. But when they first came out and I actually saw them live in concert, I had no idea what they were singing about. I had no clue why they were so angry, but somehow I still related to their rage, especially Tom Morello's infectious guitar riffs. As for Zac De La Roca, he was one of the few singers that managed to make rapping and singing merge seamlessly. His voice was a crossover of someone who could scream melodically and fill his lyrics with seemingly profound thoughts and meaning. But as the old saying goes, if you're not a liberal in your 20s, you have no heart. And if you're not a conservative by your 30s, you have no brain. Now, while that's not entirely accurate, there is some truth to that. For example, Rage Against the Machine's admiration for Che Guevara, a man who was directly responsible for ushering in a totalitarian dictatorship that oppressed millions of Cubans for decades. Even coming from a Cuban family myself, I had no clue who Che Guevara was when I was younger, much less what he stood for, and let alone that he was in charge of firing squads at La Cabana prison, which took the lives of hundreds of Cubans within a matter of months. And contrary to popular belief, they were not all brutal henchmen who worked for the previous dictator Fulgencio Batista. Some of those people executed were innocent Cubans, even college students, who simply refused to go along with Castro's supposed revolution. But there would be Tom Morello, considering Che as the fifth member of the band, emblazoning Che's face on one of their promotional CDs, Bomb Track, or proudly displaying his face on a guitar amp. Since my early 20s, I've become painfully aware of the costs of Castro's totalitarian dictatorship through family members and friends who were either executed, imprisoned for decades, tortured at the hands of police, reported on by their neighborhood comités de defensa, or put into forced labor camps before being exiled out of their country after having everything they ever worked for confiscated. It wasn't until my 30s that I finally listened to my parents' life stories to realize all they had lost thanks to one man's utterly selfish will to power and the mindless masses that blindly followed him into their own oppression. So when I see the utter chaos and destruction going on at the current 2017 G20 summit meeting in Hamburg, Germany, I can't help but wonder just how clueless many of these so-called protesters really are. Just by looking at the majority of the photographs, I could see these are young people. Few are the old, die-hard stalwarts that never gave up on the resistance of their youth, most likely fueled by Marxist pseudo-intellectual gibberish and probably by Noam Chomsky, no less. And it's not for nothing why these people protest. There are serious, legitimate grievances, injustices, and inequality in the world, and they're not exactly being solved by many of the globalist elites in attendance from the world's top 20 economic power nations, a few of which are ruled by brutal dictators such as Saudi Arabia's royal family or Recep Erdogan from Turkey. But this destruction of private property, endangering the lives of police who are true public servants risking their lives to keep the public safe, setting cars on fire, even in residential neighborhoods, none of this solves anything. This is not progress. This is regression. It is childish, infantile behavior that is a grim reminder that the human species has yet to fully evolve from our apish ancestry. I can understand and even empathize with the supposed anti-fascist goal, to never have another Adolf Hitler and much less a Holocaust repeat itself. I'm all for fighting against Nazism, real racism, and that purely tribal mentality. But what many of these supposed anti-fascists are doing and how they're attacking people is the very ape-like behavior they purport to stand against. This is especially evident when it comes to all the anti-capitalist rhetoric they spew. It's evidence of their utter ignorance of basic economics. They clearly don't understand how property rights, free markets, and entrepreneurship are absolute necessities in order to achieve true progress in society. It's thanks to these three conditions and rights that they have their personal smartphones they use to tweet out their planned attacks against journalists and even innocent bystanders. It's an unfortunate fact of reality that reason, common sense, and simple consideration towards others is not inherent in nature. Human civilization and genuine progress is a long, hard slog where our species has to endure some severe growing pains in the process. Until more people are taught about basic economics, the need for self-responsibility and accountability, such as birth control and planned parenthood, and simple common courtesy, we're going to continue having these needless riots that masquerade as righteous revolutions. And they will continue to be led by psychopathic, grotesquely selfish megalomaniacs, and they will be followed by young, ignorant 20-somethings that get swept up in an ape-like herd mentality we have yet to fully evolve from. And the truly powerful, the proverbial 1% of elites, will continue to remain totally out of touch 
with the legitimate problems the rest of humanity deals with. Until every single person does their part to not be a fucking asshole to others, we will continue to rage against the machine that is ultimately life itself. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe by clicking on my face. And if you want to support this channel, click on the Patreon logo or donate via paypal.me slash